care of for you. to do is to prepare the things that we need these are the things that we need so I have in here the graduated cylinder distilled water I have an alcohol lamp these are cotton swabs the small jars for our antibiotics the antibiotics that we are going to test so we have here the clindamycin cotranoxazole we have cephalexin, amoxicillin, and cloxacillin. So we are going to test today five antibiotics. And these three test tubes in here are 24-hour subculture of unknown bacteria. Okay. And I have here uh, petri dishes with solidified agar that were previously that is previously sterilized so this is a sterile nutrient agar that is already solid we are going to dissolve our antibiotic these antibiotics are all 500 milligram and i'm going to dissolve them according to standard in 10 ml distilled water So after filling all of this with 10 ml distilled water, we are now going to put our antibiotics. So these jars are already labeled. So I put here clean, which means clean the mycin. And all of them are labeled. We're going to open this antibiotic and I can't open it. There, this pens all of the content. Make sure it's empty. There, then replace the lid. And we do for everything, for all of these antibiotics. In order to make sure that the antibiotics are properly dissolved in water, we are going to stir it until it is homogeneous. Okay. Okay, so when they are properly dissolved, they are now ready to be used later when our petri dishes are all ready. The next thing that we are going to do is to inoculate bacteria into this sterile agar plates. So 
So we are going to apply a septic method. To encapsulate here, I'm going to use uh, a cotton swab. So still applying the aseptic method, we do, we make sure that the cotton is wet with the, the bacterial culture. And then we are going to strike it entirely over the surface of the agar, like this. All of the agar, make sure you cover it. Okay. So in order to make sure, you can rotate this. You have to be gentle, not to cut the agar. Okay, and then we do it like this. And you do that for the uh, for all the plates that you have. The next thing that we are going to do is to put our filter paper on top of the seeded agar plates. In order to do that, I have here a drawing of the pattern. This is um, the exact size of the Petri dish. What we are going to do is to put this on top of this paper. So you can still see here the pattern. If you can see these round ones here, that's where you are going to place the filter paper discs. So there are five since we have five antibiotics that we are going to test today. Before putting your, your filter paper disc, you shouldn't forget to label. Uh, you label here on the side, not on the lid, but at the, the bottom petri dish. So you label. I labeled in here amoxicillin, uh, cephalexin, cloxacillin, Putrimoxazole and my clindamycin will be at the bottom. Oh, I mean at the center. Okay, so we do this. And then we put our filter paper. Without treatments yet, we put our filter paper. Aseptically. Now this is our filter paper. We are going to place this and this here. You press it a little so that it will be flat on the surface. The next thing that we are going to do is to dispense antibiotics into each of these designated filter paper discs. We are going to dispense 15 microliter using this micro pipette. So 15 microliter of clindamycin. Then I'm going to dispense this at the center. Make sure it's not dripping all over the surface of your agar. There. You can replace next. Yes, you have the or trimoxazole. And 
and we have to do this for all of the filter paper discs that we have in here. Another way by which we inoculate this is we just simply get a filter paper and then you immerse this directly in here. Make sure you drain the excess liquid by touching the side of your container and then you can directly put it on the surface of the agar. Sometimes this is easier, especially if you don't have micro pipette. The next thing that we are going to do is to wrap our Petri dishes, wrap it with paper so we can incubate. Next is we are going to incubate this for 24 hours at 35 degrees centigrade. Our incubator is set at 35 degrees centigrade there. So we are going to incubate that. So it has been 24 hours since we put our setup or our petri dishes inside the incubator. It is now time to check the results. Let's open one plate to check and have a closer look. So. These are the filter paper discs that we put and the clear zone that you can see is what we call the zone of inhibition. This clear zone around the filter paper disc that has no microbial growth. So that is what, what we are going to measure today. So now we are going to measure the zone of inhibition. When you measure the zone of inhibition, you just uh, measure the clear, the ones without the growth, and it has to go across your filter paper disc. Let me repeat that. The measurement of the zone of inhibition must go across the filter paper. So in this case, the zone of inhibition in here across the filter paper is 17 millimeter. Now let's see all our results. Here is the amoxicillin, cephalexin, clindamycin, cotrimoxazole, and cloxacillin. So what's the meaning of this? First, here is a clear zone exerted by cotrimoxazole, meaning that this bacteria is cotrimoxazole susceptible. Here, amoxicillin did not exhibit zone of inhibition, meaning that this bacteria is amoxicillin resistant. Now, if you notice around cephalexin, cloxacillin, uh, there are microbial growth or bacterial growth very near the filter paper disc. But somehow, you can also see zone of inhibition. 
These are heteroresistant subpopulations. Now we are going to measure all the zones of inhibition in our Petri dish 1, 2, and 3. So this one here is our replicate 1. This one is our replicate 2 and replicate 3. So we will have a data that we can conduct a statistical analysis. And let's see which antibiotic would give a higher, the highest zone of inhibition and which are uh, which antibiotics would show the lowest zone of inhibition. Here is the complete data set of the zones of inhibition exerted by the antibiotics that we tested. Picloxacillin, cotramoxazole, amoxicillin, clindamycin, and cephalexine. And we have data of replicate 1, replicate 2, and replicate 3. Enough to conduct statistical analysis so we can know to which antibiotics our bacteria is susceptible to and to which antibiotics it is resistant to. I hope you got something from this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have not subscribed yet to this channel, please subscribe to inspire us with what we are doing. And also, you can click the bell button so that you get notified when there is new video uploaded. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.